What up everybody, welcome back to Ford Era. You got me, Solomon, here today and got a suitcase, backpack, and uh, I'm not taking gold dust, but flying out to Vegas and then gonna be driving to California for uh, the F100 Western Nationals. Gonna visit a bunch of people, take you guys along. This is gonna be a really fun trip. Going out west for 10 days. And uh, if any of you guys are out on the west coast, I'm gonna be, back just fell, I'm gonna be in Vegas for the next two days. Then I'm going to SoCal, so Los Angeles, Orange County, San Diego, maybe even up to Bakersfield, and then back to Vegas at the end. Um, hit me up, I'm gonna put my email address right over here, which is sl at fordara.com. Message me if you wanna hang out, do a what the truck, show something, just chill, whatever. And then hope to see all of you guys this weekend at the F100 Western Nationals in Anaheim. I'll see you, I guess, when I get to the airport. What's up, everybody? Oh, we're over here in Vegas. Just got to Hudson Motorsports Compound. I'm gonna catch up with Riley, show you guys some of the stuff they got going over here. It's gonna be a pretty exciting day. Stay tuned. What's up everybody? We're over here, Hudson, we got Riley, and we're out at the compound, and we're gonna show you guys around. We're just talking about fun little kids area over here. Riley, what are we looking at? Hey, so we're up here in a Calico Basin. This is a little uh, uh, horsing and, and farm area right outside of Las Vegas. It's still part of Las Vegas, uh, but it's kind of right on the outside, and uh, it's in a basin, and we have mountains on all sides of us, so you really can't see Las Vegas from from this area at all. So it really feels like you're outside of the city 100%. It feels like you're in a different state, but this is where we live. And uh, we have our little, what we call our truck farm back here in the backyard that we'll go back and check out some of our uh, some of our builds. Awesome, we'll follow you. Oh man. I already, I already walked out here and I got video I'm gonna show you guys probably before you even see this video of pulling them out of the stuff. But man, every time I see your stuff, it's just ah, <laughs> so nice. Well, yeah, welcome. So, yeah, we'll show you guys around. Here we've got our, our little Calico Express train. It's built on a, on one of those people movers that you see at the airport. Nice. Um, so, a really cool train. My dad, uh, between my kids and all my brothers and sisters and, and, and all of the nieces and nephews, there's like 10 grandkids now. And so, built this cool train to haul the grandkids around Calico Basin. So, we call it the Calico Express. Cool little train. That's what uh, it's but, about. But here we are. Uh, here's some of our, some of the family collection of trucks. And we'll just kind of go through and and show them off. Uh, awesome. Big Red, 69 F250 F700. Uh, took a two wheel drive F250 crew cab and made it into uh, what you see here. Really big, really custom, custom bumpers, running boards, custom bed. The step side bed is, is massive, probably the biggest step side you'll ever see. It's like a nine foot step side, it's like six feet wide. <laughs> Super cool, but uh, the rear fenders are two sets of fenders put together. It's on a Freightliner chassis with a 24 valve Cummins and an Allison six speed. Uh, we'll go more into detail on that one later. Yep, we're um, gonna do a full what the truck with it. And then we have this truck we call the blue collar hauler. This is a uh, this is a 60s Dodge swept line pickup. Um, 
really, really a cool truck. Very, very custom like Big Red. Uh, but it's got a 12 valve Cummins, uh, Allison six speed automatic, super duty taxles. Uh, we did a 64, the truck is a 68, but 64 gr uh, front end conversion. Uh, these fenders, these W300 fenders are custom because they couldn't fit 38s or 40s. They were too narrow. So we got two sets of fenders, chopped them, spread them out, wow. made bigger fender openings. Is that emblem factory or that's uh, something you had made? A, this is a 60s Dodge diesel. Dodge made some medium duty and heavy duty diesel trucks. And these were the emblems that would have gone on the side. They were not original to these trucks, but, but it's original. Well, it is yeah, an original like Dodge. It's not, no, it's not a new CNC piece. It is an old. Which is cool too. That's what I was asking. Cause that's, that would be cool. Even if you did see, yeah, see it. Exactly. So uh, real nice, very Ooh. nice relicat leather interior uh, bench seat, twin benches. Um, you know, all the, all the fixing on, fixings on this truck, you know, Dakota Digital, Vintage Air, uh, the whole nine. I did the steering column and everything. So very comfortable, very, very, very nice truck. I love the color. Blaster drive. The color is a Dodge color called Dodge Ceramic Blue. Seen it on like fourth gen and fifth gen Dodge 1500s and 2500s. Okay. Really pretty cool color, but it's that really cool ceramic, you know, kind of gray, gunmetal gray, gunmetal blue. Yeah. Um, Right now it's on 38s, on 20s, um, but truck used to be on 40s. Kind of fun to switch it up, put on 38, see how it drives a little bit better. Custom bumpers front and rear, and then the bed is a uh, custom length, but but the cool thing about Dodge swept, uh, Dodge step sides is they were pretty much the right proportions from factory. Ford step sides were very narrow, and uh, so all of our Ford step sides we end up stretching, but the Dodge step sides came big from factory, so they're really pretty nice to do these step side bed conversions because you get the right dimensions from them. Um, and on another truck, I'll show you what I mean by too narrow and widening the beds and whatnot. Um, but very cool truck, custom bumpers. Uh, my favorite piece on the truck, we'll walk back around to the front um, and then we'll pop the hood. Um, oh, we did the fenders on the rear. I forgot to talk about that. To match the front fenders, we got another set of front fenders, chopped them, stretched them, and welded them to the rear fenders to make them look very nice. Yeah. My favorite piece on this truck is the bumper. I love um, this from bumper. The bumper is wicked cool. Um, this brush guard is the original brush guard that came with the 64 donor truck that we used huh. for the front clip. So the, the, the brush guard is original. Obviously it was chopped at the very bottom because this would have been a bolt-on style. Uh, chopped on the very bottom. Uh, the tube and the diamond plate, obviously, it's a little dirty right now, but the tube and diamond plate obviously are, are new fabrication. But this lower piece, this lower valence is very, very, very cool. These are, This is the original lower valence that would have filled between the bumper and the bottom of really? the grill. Very, very, very cool. So we that took is. that off, bought a second one because we needed two so that we section and cut, but it has been sectioned and cut down to, to be the lower plate. But these were the original louvers that would have fed, you know, some extra air into the, um, into the radiator and whatnot. So very cool, chopped the section down to make a cool plate bumper out of an original piece like that. That is really cool. Um, so it's, the bumper is the most expensive bumper that we have on any of our trucks, <laughs> but it is absolutely the coolest piece. And then there's your, uh, there's your 12 valve. Ooh. That one looks really nice. So this is a this is a VE, not a P pump. Okay. Uh, P pump swaps are, are in the plans when the VE takes a dump. Uh, the truck runs and drives great, builds plenty of boosts, and so we just like to drive it. And then when the when the VE goes out, we'll put a P pump in it. There you go. You know, that's that's called upgrade of Titus. You know, when you just you're just always upgrading left and right. If it ain't so broke, you don't fix it. But as exactly. soon as it does break, exactly. now you have an excuse. Maybe, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 56 F600, uh, original coach built crew cab. We'll go into more detail on this later. The rat rod, very, very, very cool truck. Um, and there's plenty to talk about on that. Uh, another one of our favorites and a very, very special truck. The George. This is our, this is our, uh, our Jeep, J, we call it the J60. It is a J10, a Wagoneer put together to make a crew cab J10. So the Wagoneer four doors, but then the back of the cab is the J10. Uh, but it is sitting on a 2003 F450 chassis, so it's got a 6.0 power stroke in it and, and five-speed automatic and uh, just is a wicked cool. So I guess it almost qualifies to be on the Ford era. It's, but it's got the heart of a Ford. It's got the heart of a Ford. Very, very cool truck. We'll start it up so you can hear that beautiful 6.0 because everybody knows 6.0s aren't reliable, but they have the best sounding idle of all time. So yeah. very yeah. cool truck painted in lead foot, you know, Raptor lead foot gray. Um, but like I said, back here, this is where the, the Wagoneer stopped and where the J10 began. And then the Wagoneer doors had a fender well cut in it right here. So we filled the doors to make it look like a true crew cab. Nice. But very cool truck, uh, TMI interior, um, you know, just nice black on gray, really nice, comfortable daily driver. Um, 
But just, Man, you guys have the recipe down. Yeah, so this thing, I love full-size Jeeps. Um, I'm more, mostly a Ford guy, but I think Jeeps, especially full-size Jeeps are some of my favorites. So very cool truck. So Dually, 37s on 22s. Uh, the bed is custom built. And then these rear fender flares, these step side fenders, um, these have been stretched probably 10 inches wider than factory. We got like three inches here, two inches here, and then like an inch here in the middle. So they're probably, or I would have to probably say five or six inches here in the middle. So to cover those big dually fender flares. Dude, the uh, tailgate is everything. Yeah, big old massive tailgate. Took a step side tailgate and cut that in to make it just like that. So very cool custom bumpers, but a very, very, very cool truck. Roll bar uh, is made out of pipe, not not too, so it is extremely heavy, but legitimately would probably help protect the cab roll. <laughs> if, if it ever rolled. It won't roll. I mean, these diesels, they're heavy, but we ain't going like sports car driving. But we'll hear it because it sounds great. sound as cool as the 6 and idle. You know, I think they just sound great. They're really cool trucks, so. Dude, that must trip people out. If you're just at a, at a red light, you probably trip people out. Yep. They'll have no idea what it is. All the time, you can't go anywhere, because nobody knows, because they don't exist, you know? There's been a few people out there who have done these conversions, these crew cap J10 conversions, but very little trucks. It's got such a menacing front end too. It is really cool. So wide front fenders from Autofab, big old front grill. And then this is the Gladiator grill from like the 60s full-size Jeep. So very so cool, cool stuff. Over here is our 57 Chevy crew cab. Uh, this is an original coach built crew cab as well by Armbruster. Uh, sitting on a custom chassis, 572 big block, uh, Dana 80 axles. Very nice truck. Uh, it's actually going to go back under the knife soon. We're going to do some extra custom touches like a different front clip and uh, Make it a little more daily driver friendly. That 572, although it is a screaming motor, makes like 650 horsepower from the factory, uh, is is not very friendly to driving right now. So we're gonna do some changes. Uh, we won't talk too much about it because I know this is not a Chevy channel, but very, very, very rare truck. Uh, in the past 10 years of collecting crew cabs, I've seen four go for sale or four up. Um, and I bought two of them. One went to the one went to a wrecker up in Washington, and one is owned by a company called Pure Metal Works. They built yep. a really nice slammed twin turbo. D yeah, uh, Dan Euronics. is actually he's remaking cabs now. Yep, he is. Yeah, and, and and he is those guys, man. His is the nicest. Oh, one for of sure. the nicest crew cabs. Just uh, period. And just anything. Yeah, it doesn't so matter nice. what. Just so 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 nice. So yeah. this is gonna go back under the knife. Uh, but very, very, of, of all the trucks we own, top three of the rarest trucks that we own. These Chevys are just worth their weight in gold because they only made a, a few hundred and very few are left. And then the last truck, which we'll, when we want to start talking about the what the trucks, we'll bring this one up. But yeah. Give me a little walk around. We'll, we'll give you a little walk around. This is our 64 F-250 short bed four wheel drive. Very cool truck, very special. A um, lot, a lot, a lot of metal work. A lot, you know, this truck is very custom and I'm sure all you Ford guys are looking at like what in the hell is going on with this thing so we'll we'll do some good uh, we'll do a good walk around here in a minute but yeah this is this is our compound this is where you know this is where the trucks get stored we have these really nice um, these shelters because out here in the Vegas Sun you know 115 120 degrees in the summer and then up in the basin here we get wind that rips around so much it just kicks up dust and it's like a it's like a sandblaster up in here so keep them out of the Sun keep them in these shelters Nevada's dumb and you can only build two permanent structures on one piece of property and so we can't build a nice big garage out here yet but eventually we'll have a nice garage and it'll be nice so Hell yeah uh, so yeah these are just you know our family's collection something that my dad and I have been doing for a long time as a hobby and and uh, and what's the know, story on that Tonka nice truck one. oh the Tonka let's walk over there. I think we need to just show it to them just because yeah. of how cool it looks it fits in with your value even though it's so small but it's like <laughs> the biggest small one you know so the Tonka this is just a toy that we built a long time ago. It's been built and rebuilt a dozen, half a dozen times. Uh, it's a, one of those Suzuki carries, one of those like little landscaping trucks. Yeah. And uh, put it on Jeep axles and put a Suzuki Samurai motor in it and give it a little more power than what the carries had. And uh, a functional dump bed and everything in it. And this thing must be really fun around the property. It to, is like... fun around the property, but it never leaves the property. This is a, 
this is just a fun landscaping track that we just get to rip around in. It's yeah. pretty cool. Right hand, you know, right hand drive. Here oh, on this side. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't think I could even yeah, fit in there. I don't think you could either. <laughs> I barely fit. It's just cool. It does fit in because it's like, you, I think, I think we know what your style is. Yeah. Which is the coolest, most random lifted. And then you've been doing Very lifted cool. badass stuff before everybody started doing it. Now it's like the thing, oh, we need four by four trucks. Yeah. But like four or five years ago, everybody was on the lowered stuff. Yeah, yeah stuff was still getting slammed. And, and you guys have been doing this. Yeah. I mean, it's been so. fun. I, I, you know, uh, starting as a hobby between my dad and I was just, just something fun to do. And, and this is just kind of all my dad's vision coming to life. And he just has a, he wants to do something and it's like, Riley, go get it done. And so just having to learn how to kind of, get what my dad's crazy brain can concoct up and put it on to into metal is like okay i've just had to learn on the fly and we work with great people guys like nefarious customs here in town and and eric the find and some great fabricators and great shops to to really make a lot of these things come true because i could not do it by myself with my little shop and we'll go over to my shop later but we couldn't do it and and so we've got great people and a great team that we work with and been able to come up with some really cool stuff but you know when we first started there was no plans. It was, you know, I would say this, it was never a competition. It was never like, you know, we, we want to build the coolest stuff or have better stuff than anybody. It was just like, hey, what if we took, you know, like with the green Ford here, it was like, what if we took an F-250 and we took an F-800 cap and we put the roof of an F-800 so we'd have some extra headroom. Oh, that'd be cool. And what if at the same time we cut in a big back window from a unibody? Oh yeah, <laughs> that'd be cool. Oh, and you know what, at the same time, let's put F600 fenders on it and make it big and put it on 40s. Yeah, let's do it. You know, it was just, it was no, there was no like thought process of, oh, nobody's doing this. And we, you know, we got to do it to be different or anything like that. It was just like, no, like yeah, let's, build something cool. let's just build something cool. Let's just, and, and a lot of times you're kind of at the beginning, like this is a nice truck that we're cutting up. Like, yeah. Do we really want to go chop yeah. it up this nice for truck? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And then it turns out to be pretty cool. So yeah, it's sure. been very fun. So it's nice to have the trucks up here. It's fun to have people up and, you know, right up here up in Red Rock, we'll go for a cruise later in Big Red, but we'll go cruise around and, and you'll see we have the best driving road in Nevada called the Red Rock Loop. It's like a 13 mile, basically like a racetrack that you can go on. And it's not a real racetrack, but it's very nice paved road. And we just have the best driving roads up here. So it's fun. It's fun to have people up and pull the trucks out and go for a nice scenic cruise. And you're not just having to go cruise city streets and stop and go traffic. It's really nice. And so it's fun to have them up here in Calico and you know, nice to be kind of out of town and outside of Las Vegas, get away from the strip, get away from all that kind of stuff, come up here into nature and, you know, you go for a hike and come up here and take the trucks out. And it's really pretty, pretty rad. Yeah. Well, we're going to, I'm going to bust the drone out, uh, let them know where they could check you guys out, even though yeah. we'll probably say that again when we go to right. the other shop. But Right. So my website is hotsonmotors.com. Uh, we also do vehicle giveaways every couple of months where we build something with the, fear, with the sole purpose of giving it away. Uh, where we sell shirts and hats and knives and all sorts of stuff. And like so that. you can check out yeah, like this hat here or this shirt here. Uh, we sell some Ford Era stuff on there as well. True. Um, so um, you can check us out there. And then our Instagram is at Hots and Motors. And so is our Facebook. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. And the giveaways are a blast too. And they're a great way of just kind of having the fun chance of winning a cool truck like this. So yeah. we recently just gave away a 79 Bronco, a full-size Bronco, and it went awesome. So yeah, check out the next one. It's going to be cool. Heck yeah. Gonna bust the drone out, you guys enjoy the footage.
All right, so I thought you know we were gonna go drive over to the shop and um, Riley. Yeah, so we've got a we've got F100 Nationals in Anaheim, right? Western and Nationals. I can't go, so I'm gonna give the keys to uh, to Solomon here, and he's gonna Dude. take Big Red down for me. And uh, so if you're out there, you're gonna see Big Red cruising on the freeway and cruising out to the Nationals. So it's gonna be really cool. Dude, I can't believe that. Nah, that's it's all awesome. good, brother. So it's gonna be sweet. You'll see a lot of Big Red on the road, and it'll be some. You'll get some good cool videos out of it. This is gonna be a lot more fun than the rental car that I was gonna go get, but. Uh, I guess I'm gonna go drive this one, follow him over to his shop, and uh, see you guys there. All right, so before we were at the compound, now we're at the shop. Surround. So this is our backyard. Um, it's nice to have it in the backyard because, so we're back here at my house, and, and it's just nice to be able to walk outside and go to work and work as late as you want, and pretty nice. And nobody knows it's, it's back here hidden, and, and all of our neighbors are cool, and everyone does the same thing in there in the backyard too. So this is on the side of Las Vegas. That's all ranch homes and stuff like this. And so everyone's got big paved backyards like this. And so it's really nice. nice. We've got our crane, our, our two post lift, our garage where we work inside and a nice big enough yard for, for junk. We've got yeah. all sorts of junk. So we've got a lot of cool stuff over here. And I think your guys is following is going to really, really want to see that. So Oof. maybe we start over here. I don't know where we're going to start. Whatever start you want. Whatever. It's your show. Yeah. Um, we got all sorts of cool stuff. That's the Bronco that we just gave away. We should do it with the truck with that thing. We should do it with the truck on the back. So that's the Bronco we just gave away. And uh, no, we got some cool stuff. So let's walk around and check it out. Awesome. Let's okay, go. So uh, very, very, very cool truck here. This is a 66 uh, F-250 crew cab. It's actually been kind of converted into an F-100. It's got F-100 fenders on it and is, is lower. This is a real bastard of a truck. Um, and a lot of people hate it because it's a bastard truck, but it's a fair, I mean, if you've seen these Slickside Crew Cabs, they're just always rusted to death. This thing is in phenomenal, phenomenal shape. I know it's kind of a shame that it's just sitting out here, but we're gonna do some extra work to it later, but it's actually on a, it's on a Chevy uh, 1500 IFS chassis, and it's got a 454 in it, it's 700 R4. Wow. So it's very bastardized, but it's fast as balls and loves to eat tires. And it's um, yours. And it's mine, and it's wicked cool. So yeah, I, I just think it's cool and it's really fun to drive in, and you've seen all our stuff is all big and lifting four by four, and so it's cool to hang out and have something slammed that's fun to drive and cruise around. So plus, if you run out of parking, you just park this one underneath Big Red. Exactly, just park it right underneath. It'll be just fine. Yeah, exactly. It'll be fine. So it's a cool truck, like I said. Um, yeah, four fifty four, but it's. I, I, I'm thinking. I actually like the turquoise. I think we'll leave the turquoise, but I want to two tone it and paint from this line up white, as so I do a white That'll on turquoise better. with some white or black Detroit steels underneath some like 20s Dude, those billets though i mean oh, 1990 yeah like that was the thing yeah this was the thing in the that, 1990s well, i mean these scorpion billets they're so ugly whoever truck this was was the coolest it was the coolest truck because this thing had purple ghost flames when i bought it i purple remember ghost flames i got rid of those instantly 44 those inch like, sunroof yeah, yeah like that sunroof up there it leaks like a mother yeah that's, <laughs> that's the worst thing <laughs> it leaks so bad but i'm sure whatever you know we'll reseal it i'm yeah. not gonna go and make a patch panel we'll just reseal it yeah and call it good, but very cool truck very rare um so and it runs and drives awesome so we got some other cool very rare stuff this is a uh, Toyota Land Cruiser BJ45. This was National Geographic's um, Nat Geo truck for the island of Cyprus out in the Mediterranean. Really? It's a very cool truck. Uh, it's got an LS3 in it, kind of just being staged away for the time being. Uh, this is probably the rarest truck we own, so we should look at it. Um, of all the trucks we have, this is probably the rarest of the rare. This is a three door um, original 1959 fargo power wagon so huh. you know people do these power wagon crew cabs like like uh, legacy classic trucks and these guys they do these really big three hundred thousand dollar custom they are building them themselves crew cabs um but they're taking two power wagons putting them together this is a factory built power wagon wow built by fargo which is dodge's european subsidiary uh, this truck spent its life in france as a government truck in france hmm. very 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 rare three-door is cab and it's weird and it's goofy it's shaped like a like a tea bucket or like a you know it's shaped yeah, like it's an old narrow hobby. in the front it's wide in the front and wide in the rear because this could fit five guys they, they would have called this a five-man cab because these trucks are so narrow up front you only fit two people in the front wow and three in the back very cool very 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 rare truck. this is the one that you have the crazy story with. yeah this is a very crazy story we bought this truck on bring a trailer if i'm not mistaken like seven years ago the shipper who went and picked it up was like hey like i do some 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 fabrication and some classic truck work like could i could i do some work on it and we were like yeah sure great we love spread the love you know give this guy some work he ends up stealing the truck okay steals the thing we file police reports do everything we can and nothing just gone 
We lose the truck for like five years. And after like five years, we finally recovered the truck. Go out there, pick it up, get it all back from the dude. Sit out in the field, out in like Iowa or something. Just sitting in the field and go out and recover. Wow. Crazy freaking stuff. Wow. Came back, just beat to death, whatever. We'll, we'll redo it, but it's sitting on a on a modern Hemi chassis and it'll be really cool. Uh, it's just kind of getting mothballed. It's in the staging process and the fab work is done. It's got a new floor, new new cab mounts, new firewall and everything else. So it's kind of ready to get going again and nice. make core support. So very, very rare truck, maybe one of one. So, you know, this, the rat rod, the 56 F600 and our 57 Chevy crew cabs are, are some of the rarest. Uh, we'll do a what the truck on this. This is our, our 79 Bronco that we just gave away. 76 front end swap, very cool truck. Uh, this is a customer build that we're doing right here. Uh, Blake, uh, B&B Gordon, or, or Gordon's Fabrication on Instagram. Uh, he and I have been doing this truck together. 79 Super Cab, uh, 12 valve, P-Pump Swap, NV4500 5 speed manual. Very cool truck. So, Cub and Swap is done. We're doing drive line, drive shafts now, and then we'll do final assembly. Nice. And then there's this behemoth. This is, uh, I know we're, Solomon loves I think, I think we're casual. standing way too close. We're standing way too nobody close. Nobody can't see it. <laughs> can't tell them. Oh, that's right. We'll cut that out. Sorry. No, so, I'll, I'll leave it in. I just, okay. Nobody knows what okay. you're talking about. So, this thing is probably my favorite thing we've ever bought. Ever. I bought it for like 6,500 bucks. This is an international wow. Lodestar crew cab camper built by a camper company in the 60s. It's a 1964. Wow. Uh, it is an absolute time capsule. It's in phenomenal shape. We're just kind of in the final stages of doing trim, interior, stuff like that. Um, it's the slowest thing you'll ever drive. It's got a, okay, uh, it's got a, like an international 345 and it's so slow, but you gotta see the inside. This thing is a freaking time capsule. Uh, we've already done some work to the interior, um, but it was in really good shape when we got it. Like really, really, really nice shape. But dude, I can't wait to take this thing up to the mountains and go cruising around with my family. I could step down if you want. That's all right. One, two, ah. Oh man. So, dude, just straight out of 1964 up in here. The coolest. So like all these appliances, this stove, this sink, the refrigerator, this is all original stuff. It's super, super, super cool. And it all works. Everything works. We had the benches reupholstered in a nice like vintage style with the tweed and the vinyl on the side. And this turns into a bed. Yeah, this turns into a bed. That back there turns into a bed. And then we've got our bed up here, wow. which we upholstered in the same way. So you got to hop up here. Here's your master bedroom up top. And then your pass through right there into the into the cab. So super, like just gonna be a rad thing to cruise around. I don't think we'll leave the international motor in it forever because it's so unbearably slow, like dangerously slow, really. Yeah. Uh, so it might either get LS swapped or something. Um, no, you need, you need a big old diesel. Big, big, but the problem with with these internationals is the engine bay is so short and really? wide. Really? Yeah. So you could fit a Coyote in there because it's so you have enough space for a wide crank, a wide you'd V get like double four or a miles cam. to the gallon. Yeah, yeah, it would be terrible. My favorite part, the whole truck, is the bathroom, dude. Check this out. There's your bathroom, shower onto the floor, and then your little porta potty in there dude, with its own gray tank. So so cute, super cool. So, so this is really cool. But yeah, all this, all this hardwood and everything, this is all original stuff. We just did some extra add-ons, like we redid the floor with something nice. And then these fans, like we did put new fans in the ceiling. And so it's cool, cause it's got everything. It's got like 12 volt. So I think these lamps, one of these lamps runs off of 12 volt. One of these runs off of propane. And then the other one of them runs off of 220. Nice. Um, so all really cool. Um, I don't, I, but I really gotta like learn the thing before I go take it out and try and go camping before I, I hear there's, you, a but there's a learning curve. But you definitely will cool. make some awesome memories in this. But like I mean, all this stuff, all the handles, everything is all, you know, pretty much either original or replaced a long time ago, and it's just a cool time capsule. And I'm really excited about it. The thing is awesome. Yeah, whoever had this thing back then knew how to have fun. Yeah, they did. But it's wicked cool, and yeah, we just got a little bit of you know, weather stripping and little stuff to finish up on that. So, and then uh, we'll show you what we've been working on in the garage. Really cool truck. This is for a client of ours. Uh, he bought some trucks from us in the past and uh, he brought us this about a year ago and he's just about ready to come pick it up. This is, uh, we've been building this in conjunction with uh, Eric Define, with Zach Eric and those guys over there. Um, this is a 68 Dodge power wagon. So original four by four short bed. Uh, crew cab truck, very, very nice. We uh, repainted it in British racing green, really dark, deep metallic green color, really cool. It just We just finished ceramic coating it yesterday, so the, the paint is like absolute glass. Custom bumpers, winch bumper, 
uh, all the wheels and trim done in this nice um, gunmetal gray, really cool. Uh, 37 inch tires came three, some cool tall skinnies. And then just a really, really, really nice, classy, distressed brown interior. That's really nice. Yeah, but full restoration, so, you know, weather stripping, everything, you know, just really nice air conditioning. Um, it is just a funny story because Brian, the owner, uh, has a single cab uh, Dodge Power Wagon, um, W100. And uh, so these are called W200s. Um, his single cab is pretty cool. I've been down to California and seen it. He goes, oh, but I got to get one of those crew cabs. So he sent me the eBay listing for this one. And I could tell in pictures it was a nightmare. You could just see rat's nest of wiring just hanging out all over the place. And I said, Brian, don't you buy that truck. And he says, oh, it's too late. I already did. I'm like, oh, no. So I'm like, okay, are you going to ship it to me? He goes, no, I want to drive it. I want to see if it's nice. So he sends it down to California. He's down in Newport Beach. It dies on him in his first drive around the block. It dies on him. Takes a dump. And so he sends it out and, and it, this was one of those builds that it was just step after step, like, okay, let's keep this in a budget. Let's, let's, you know, let's just fix what's broken and keep driving it. We'd fix one thing and then it would just lead to the next thing of, you know, okay, well we were gonna just do this, but now we gotta replace the axles because the axles weren't the original axles that were underneath it. So this got super dirty axles. And after that, it was like, well, let's do 37s after that. And it was, okay, well, if we've gone this far, we might as well repaint the truck and do the upholstery. And it was just one of those snowball effect of walls and it, it turned into a full entire restoration after we're done. But the truck just turned out just immaculate. Really, really, really cool. I'll show you the engine. Big old 512 Mopar big block. Hydro Boost, Holly Sniper, everything, you know, Holly Sniper distributor, fuel injection, ignition, everything, air conditioning, just all to the night. Super Heck excited yeah. about it. It's an awesome truck. So he's coming to pick this up tomorrow, and we're really pumped for it. Nice. Yeah. Well, let everybody know where to check you out. Um, I think this is probably going to be the end of our video. Yep. So if you guys want to see more about what we do, check us out on Instagram at Hots and Motors. Um, we also do some giveaway trucks like that Bronco over there that we, we just gave away. Uh, we do trucks like that where we'll buy something just to restore it. Make it nice, make it cool and custom, and then we give it away on our website, hotsandmotors.com. So make sure you check us out and make sure you watch the rest of the videos that Solomon and I have been doing. Uh, he's doing a bunch of What the Truck episodes and highlighting all of our collection and stuff, so make sure you check those out too. Heck yeah. And uh, I will see you guys shortly. I don't think this is going to end the video, um, but if it does, make sure to like, subscribe, drop a comment. Uh, and if not, see you in the next clip.